Yeah, welcome. So with this lecture, we'll be moving on to the next topic, which is adversarial search. So with what we have discussed in the last class, with that, we'll be stop discussing local search techniques. Now we'll be moving on to the next topic. This is adversarial search. Okay. So first let us try to understand what is meant by adversarial search. So in an adversarial search, there are, there are two players. Minimum there will, there will be two players in an adversarial search. So the player one, so the, the player one will always tries to maximize his performance. The player, the player one will always try to maximize his performance or uh, he tries to maximize his score or whatever it may be. He, tr he, he tries to maximize, right? Okay. So where is the player two? There is another player. The player two, he always tries to minimize the player one. He always tries to minimize the performance of player one. Whereas player one always tries to maximize, ma maximize his own performance. So, so in this context, how the search should proceed? That's what we are going to discuss in adversarial search. So there are two agent. So, so actually, actually there, it is something like two players, player one and player two. So basically player one, he wants to win. Player two, he wants to win. So in other ways, in, in other words, we can say that player one want to maximize his score and player two want to maximize his score. But, but we are focusing the problem from player one's perspective. Okay. We are focusing the problem from the perspective of player one. So from the perspective of player one, if you see, the player one always want to maximize his score. Then instead of saying that player two want to maximize his own score, we can say that player two always want to minimize the score of player one. Because when the goal, when the score of player one is minimized, obviously the score of player one maximizes. Right? So, so we are focusing, we are seeing the problem uh, from players one's perspective, right? We are approaching the problem solving approach. We are from the players one perspective. So as a player one, we always try to maximize the performance. But at the same time, we should be aware that there is an opponent who is always trying to minimize my performance. So in, in such a scenario, how the search or the algorithm should proceed. So, so that's what we are going to discuss in adversarial search so, so that the name adversarial. So there is, there is something, there is some adversarial element is there uh, who, who always tries to uh, reduce our performance. So, so in that environment, uh, how the algorithm should work. Okay. So we'll be, we'll be trying to understand adversarial search with some games, with some game playing examples like chess or, or any other games. Uh, so, so, so there is a question like why AI search, why AI researchers study game playing? Why are we taking games and we are trying to understand? Why can't we take some real life scenario? So, so instead of taking uh, real life scenarios, why are we taking games? So, so there is a question. So the answer is, Actually, if you take any real life scenario, first of all, the real life scenario may have innumerable number of states. They may have innumerable number of states and we may not be able to represent or specify all the states. And second, the rules may not be fixed. The rules may not be fixed. The rules may change. The rules may change. So. So because of this, the problem itself, we, we may not be able to define the problem itself in a proper way. 
but if you take any games if you take any games in a game like chess also if you see there are many states are there so if you take a game that doesn't mean that it does not have many many states in in game also we have many states for example if you take a game like chess there are so many states are there so so it is it is really complex so in one sense it is equal to the real life scenario but the rules are fixed but the rules are fixed and and we know the rules of the games and we know that if this is the rule if you apply this rule that will happen so like that we have standard rules so with standard rules it becomes e it becomes easy for the algorithm to imply uh, to implement and also we can verify and also we can verify the performance of the algorithm with humans or with other machines okay so that is the reason why we are interested in why ai researchers are interested in games because games are a good reasoning problem it is more formal it is non trivial non trivial means it, it is not it is not very obvious so that doesn't mean that games are easy uh, that doesn't mean that the real world problems are tough and games are easy no in games are all in, in ga so games basically simulate the real world scenario to some extent right or to a larger extent as the complexity of the game increases the it becomes more non trivial so if you take any video game any typical video game initially it, it will be of very less complex right that is it will be very trivial first two stages you may be able to cross very quickly but as the stage increases as the level increases when you go to third level or fourth level it becomes more complex right so uh, so actually the games are a good approximation of what is happening in the real world right so it's a good reasoning problem it's formal and it is non trivial and in real life also if you see uh, intelligence is more connected with games intelligence in real life also if you see intelligence is more connected with game if somebody is good in intelligence they will be good in playing certain games also like chess cards right so these games really actually uh, it even improves the in intelligence of individuals because it, it improves the thinking capability of the individuals right uh, so right so so these so these are some of the reason uh, why the researchers are interested in games okay and 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 already somebody has worked on the game and the rules were uh, we have some concrete rules for example if you have if you see the uh, game of cards there are different plays are available in cards right and for for every play there is a rule and and it is and it is a very concrete rule mathematically right so so just i am trying to justify why uh, solving the game gaming problem using uh, ai uh, it, it, it's not a bad idea in fact it's a good idea right so and also whatever the results we are getting we write, we, we write an algorithm for game playing for playing some games and the result can be easily compared with humans and other 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 computer programs right so it's not that only you are writing a program say already there is a program somebody has written for chess say say let us let us call it as algorithm 1 now you are writing a new algorithm for chess let us call it as algorithm 2 now whether my algorithm is better than the existing algorithm or not i can compare right and also i can compare Uh, my performance with with some other humans right so all these are possible with the with the games and its existing rules so these are the reasons why the researchers are interested in uh, the solving or trying to solve a problem through games okay fine uh, so uh, and mostly many games are of strategical nature Okay, many games of strategy, and and most of the game games are of strategic nature. They are not sequence. So so sequence means, so when a solution will be a sequence, a solution will be a sequence, uh, if it is a single agent uh, problem or if it is a single agent game. If there is only one agent is involved in the game, and if the environment is deterministic, if there is only one agent, and if the environment is deterministic. 
then the solution will be sequence otherwise if there are multiple agent is there obviously if there are more than one agent is there uh, one one is one is agent one who is uh, and the other one is agent two if agent one and agent two are opposing each other right either agent one will win or agent two will win in that case it becomes strategic it becomes strategic because agent one always tries to improve his score whereas agent two always tries to reduce the score of agent one right so so in a game of strategy uh, this is the following characteristics the the games of strategy will have the following characteristics what are they there will be sequences of moves to play that is if first agent one plays then after that agent two will play once agent two plays again agent one will play so so like that they will uh, they will alternate their moves rules that specify possible moves and there will be fixed rules like uh, what are the possible moves are allowed which moves are not allowed all these things will be fixed rules that specify a payment for each move so when you when you do some good move you will get some credit you will some get some credit okay and our objective is to maximize your payment so so when you when you make a right move you will get some credit either in terms of point or or you will kill somebody in the opponent or you will strike off somebody in the opponent all these are what it is a payment and your objective is to maximize the payment so if you take any game of strategy that is if you take any multi agent game then it will have all these features it, there will be sequence of moves to play uh, there will be rules that specify the possible moves and when you when you do a good move you will be paid that is you will be rewarded and the objective is to maximize your payment or the reward and uh, what's the difference between the games and search problems so so if you see uh, here search problems in the sense we are we are talking about uh, so if you see we are, we are talking about search problems in the sense uh, uh, we we are talking about actually the ones with single agent single agent problems that is which pro provides a sequence as a solution and when you say games we are we are talking about multi agent problem or or the problems which were working in an unpredictable environment right that is non deterministic environment non deterministic environment here single agent we are talking about deterministic environment in a deterministic environment the solution will be a sequence and what action if i do what will be the next state that we know clearly okay if i do this action what will be the next state that is known clearly but that is not the case in games because in games here games in the sense we are talking about multi agent games there are more than one player if one player is trying to maximize his goal the other player is trying to minimize his goal that is the opponent's goal right so so it is unpredictable opponent in in game we have an unpredictable opponent always we have an unpredictable opponent and we don't know what is the opponent is going to do and according to the opponent's move we have to make our move so that it is called a strategic that is specifying a move for every possible opponent reply so depending on the opponent's move we should make our plan so we cannot make a plan only thinking of ourselves right we should also think of the opponent if i do this what opponent will do if opponent will do that then what should i do accordingly we have to make a plan right and also there is a time limit time is another another faction another factor unlikely to find a goal must must approximate that, that what does it mean it means that you you don't have unlimited time within a specific time you have to make the next move say for example so let us consider the chess with a, a timer chess with a timer so there are two players player 1 and player 2 so if it is player 1 turn player 1 will have some time so player 1 should make the move within 5 minutes then within this 5 minutes he has to identify the best move right so he does not have time 
to evaluate all the possible moves and find which is the best move no so so there should be some approximation should be involved because your time is limited so you you cannot calculate everything perfectly so you should allow uh, the the nature of the problem itself it should allow for some approximation right so these are also some of the characteristics of uh, games so uh, one is the the opponent's move is unpredictable as the opponent's move is unpredictable that is there may have multiple choices the opponent can make then accordingly we should make a best choice and also there is a factor of time time limit for for every move we cannot take unlimited time because our time is limited so we cannot evaluate everything and then identify the best one and then make the move no we should do we should uh, some we should follow some form of approximation techniques right so this flow chart actually uh, explains the concept of a two player game right so in a two player game what happens first uh, we are assuming that it is opponent's move let us assume it's not our move it's opponent's move so opponent makes some move after making his move he created a new position the opponent has created a new position now this new position may be a game state may be a goal state so whatever the new position the opponent has created it may be a goal if it is a goal then the game will over so check whether it's a goal state or not if it is a goal then game is over if if is if if game is over then stop if it is not over if the game is not over then it is our turn okay this is opponent's turn if the game is not over then it is our turn so we can make the move before making the move what we do we generate all the successes from the current state this is the current state from this state what are the possible successes i can have i can go to either this state or i can go to this state or i can go to this state so on and so forth i can, these are the n possible states i can reach right now we evaluate all these n states so which state now we should identify which is the good state so apply some evaluation function and evaluate all these n states and identify some evaluation score say so this e1 is the evaluation score of s1 e2 is the evaluation score of s2 e3 so on and so forth up to en so we evaluate all the solution okay after evaluating then then this is our current state then from the current state we move to the state with the highest valued successor all these are successes say so out of this whichever is the highest valued say s3 is the highest valued then we will move to s3 then we will move to s3 so now we have moved to a new state again we check whether this is the goal state or not if this is the goal state then game is over if game is over then stop if game is not over then again it is opponent's turn now opponent will take his time he will make the move and this process continues this process continues until the game gets over so this is the overall scenario of a two player game okay so here our goal is to maximize our output our successor but the opponent's goal is to minimize our 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 value our point right okay uh, so what we have discussed in the previous uh, slide is so this is the generic case this is this is how generally the concept works that is at every state generate all the successors evaluate the successor and move on to the one with the highest value successor but sometimes you may not have time to evaluate all the successors say we have to finish our move within 5 minutes but say that we have 1000 successors now you cannot generate all the successors and you cannot evaluate all the successors in that case we have to apply some approximation technique and we have to identify what will be the most appropriate move okay so in most real world it will be like this only because we cannot create all successors always and we cannot always evaluate all successors and find the next state because we have a we have a limit on the time right okay so we can so games can be considered as adversarial search why we call it as adversarial search because always there is an opponent who is always trying to minimize our performance 
as a player we want to improve our performance we want to maximize our performance but there is a opponent who is always trying to minimize our performance so when you consider the game as adversarial adversarial search what are the things it involves states states are nothing but board configuration if you take a guess a chess game then the different possible board configuration are the states initial state is the board position at which you are going to start the the current the present board position in which player will make a move that is the initial position successor function is the set of operations that you can do for example if you take a chess game what are the possible operations you can do where what is the what is the rule of moving the pawn how a pawn can be moved how a rook can be moved how a bishop can be moved how a queen can be moved all these are nothing but for for all operations we have to define an equivalent function so all these are called a successor function returns a list of move state pairs so if i move this if i make this move then what will be the next state if i make this move what will be the next state so basically successor function it returns a list of move state pairs each indicating a legal move and the resulting state right so what are the legal move that we know as per the rule of the game how each uh, i mean how each coin can move that that we know or that should be specified in the program so successor function basically it returns a list of move and state pairs indicating the legal move and the resulting state and the terminal test it determines like whether the game is over or not whether you have reached the goal state or not and the utility function and the utility function it gives the numeric values in the terminal state so based on this when you apply the utility function on the terminal state terminal state in the sense here the uh, what you call the leaf nodes the leaf nodes are, are nothing but the terminal states so when you apply the utility function on the terminal state you will understand what is the result whether you have one or loss or it's a tie so so this is one example maybe at the terminal state if you got a value of minus 1 it means you lost if you got a value of 0 it means the game is tie it is neither you or or the opponent has win if you got a value of plus 1 it means you won okay so utility function basically it evaluates like it evaluates the terminal states and it says like whether the uh, who has won the game so here is an uh, example of a two player game in a deterministic environment so before going to generally a game playing is a non deterministic environment because you have two opponents and uh, and you don't know what the other opponent will move what the other opponent uh, choice will be right but still but still certain problems certain games can be considered as a deterministic game so this example is for a deterministic game so so given th there will be multiple states there will be multiple states but if you have sufficient time and sufficient computational power to analyze all the states then it can be called as a deterministic problem okay so this is one such example so so this is for a tic tac toe game this is for a tic tac toe game we are considering it as a deterministic uh, environment right so the deterministic means what is the next possible move we know already right so here at every alternate turn we call it as max min so you can see this is max this is min max min max min it goes on like this so so we are we are trying to solve this from computer's perspective we are trying to solve this from computer's perspective so we are assuming ourselves to be computer and the opponent to be human right so we are considering ourselves to be computer and the opponent to be human so the whenever a computer's turn is there the computer want to maximize the computer want to maximize its result whenever its opponent's turn the opponent want to minimize the score of the computer the opponent want to minimize the score of the computer okay 
and the computers move are represented using this symbol cross and the opponents move are represented using this symbol o okay so first computers move which is called as max because computer want to maximize his move then its opponents turn which is called as min because opponent want to minimize the computer's move again it is computer's turn compute which is called as max because computer want to maximize its product or output then it is opponent's move opponent want to minimize minimize computer's output which is called as wo so on and so forth it continues so in a tic tac toe game you know so the initially all the nine blocks were empty okay now the computer can move make any one of these possible moves this is the first possibility this is the second possibility this is the third possibility so on and so forth the computer can make any one of the nine choices in the first case he can keep the first coin in the left corner otherwise in the first row second column otherwise first row third column otherwise second row first column so on and so forth so these are the nine possible moves the computer can make during the first turn now as a result of this these are the possible moves the opponent can make if computer makes this move then these are the possible moves the opponent can make already computer has made this move that is it has kept the coin in the uh, first row first column now the opponent can keep the keep its coin in the first row second column or first row third column okay or second row first column or second row second column so on and so forth if computer has made this move if computer has made this move then the opponent can make he has eight possibilities he has eight possibilities right so other than this position the opponent can keep anywhere similarly if the computer made this move what are the possible moves of the opponent okay fine right so next uh, it will be computer's turn now if now for example if if originally computer made this move and opponent has made this move now what move the computer can make there are seven possibilities if originally computer made this move and opponent made this move then what moves computer can make again there are seven possibilities so for each of this uh, for each of these nine possibilities of computer sorry for each of these nine possibilities of opponent again the computer can make eight different moves right the computer can make for, for uh, sorry so for each of this uh, uh, what do you call for for each of this yeah for each of this eight different possibilities the computer can make nine dif uh, seven different moves the computer can make seven different moves again it will be opponent turn now if these three are fixed then the opponent can make can keep his coin in in any of the remaining six positions so for each of these seven positions the opponent can make six different moves so on and so forth it continues so this process continues until it reaches the leaf nodes until all blocks were filled okay until all blocks were filled or until or somebody won or somebody has already won okay so this is one particular goal state here you can see it is minus 1 because who wants here here the opponent won here because opponent all zeros in one column he put all was so opponent one so computer failed so it is minus one this is the case which is a tie nobody wins here neither the computer wins nor the opponent will so this is a tie case whether whereas this if you see here the computer wins so this x you can see at a diagonal all x were there so this is plus one so this is a this is a win by the computer This is the win by the opponent. So whenever opponent wins, it is represented as minus one. Whenever the computer wins, it is represented as plus one. Okay. So see here, you should uh, uh, understand clearly from the root node that is initial for, for the first uh, when computer makes the move, it has nine possible moves, right? Now, now the opponent can make how many possible moves? for each of the nine possible moves the opponent can make eight move, eight possible moves right so at this level you have 9 into 8 are you getting 
at this level we have 9 into 8 now for each of this 9 into 8 possible moves the opponent can make seven different moves so at this level we have 9 into 8 into seven possible moves okay at the next level for each of these 9 into 8 into seven possible moves okay the computer can make how many moves six moves so 9 into 8 into 7 into 6 right again for each of the 9 into 8 into 7 into 6 moves the opponent can make five different moves 9 into 7 into 6 into 5 right so it goes on like this until it it becomes 9 into 7 into 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 okay so which is nothing but 9 factorial so if you see the total number of states if you see the total number of states for this problem for the tic tac toe problem is 9 factorial right so so if you have sufficient computing power then you can explore all the 9 factorial states and you can make the best move in spite of the opponent may opponent is trying to minimize okay so that we call this as deterministic but as the problem increases the number of uh, states will increases and it will become more and more complex right even for this tic tac toe problem we have the number of states as 9 factorial so which is also a big number okay so 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 generally it's it's not deterministic because of the uh, nature of the problem uh, because the state space is more but we are trying to understand how the concept of game playing or how the con concept of uh, adversarial search works with a deterministic example to to understand we are taking this deterministic example okay right. so this strategy is called as mini max strategy so this strategy whatever we have discussed in the previous slide that is this is called as mini max strategy why it is called as mini max strategy because at one round we are trying to maximize and the other round the comp the opponent is trying to minimize then the computer is trying to maximize then the opponent is trying to minimize the computer's performance so it is called as mini max algorithm it's a, it's a it's it's a at, at one turn it is trying to minimize and the other turn it is trying to maximize Hence, it is called as minimax algorithm. So, in a minimax algorithm, a move, what we call as a move, when there is a move by both the players, then only we call as a move. That is, say for example, first the uh, computer's turn, so it performs max. Then the opponent's turn, it performs min. These two things combinedly, it is called as a move one max and one min both put together it is called as a move okay so so for example there is next again computer makes a move again opponent makes a move okay and that is opponent tries to minimize computer tries to max this is another move so this is two moves so totally now we have made two moves okay and if if we consider only computer makes a move or only opponent makes a move that is called as ply so a half move is called as a ply. Okay. So what is a full move? A full move is both when when uh, uh, computer should also make a move and the opponent should also make a move, or both the players should make a move. Then only we will call it as move. If only one player makes a move, that is called as a half move, or that is called as a ply. Right. And the utility function is applied to the leaf nodes. So the utility function will help us to understand like uh, uh, what is the uh, what is the final value associated with that okay. and there is something called as backed up value right so for a max position that is uh, that is if the player one is trying to maximize his his position then then the backed up value will be the largest of its successor okay for a min position the backed up value will be the smallest of the successor. And not only this, this backed up value will propagate to the parent also. So things will be clear when we discuss an example for this. 
as of now let us understand this much the for a max position that is if the player is trying to maximize his his score then then out of all his children he will find the children with the maximum value okay so the value of his largest successor successor is children so for a max position this will be the max of the children this will be the max of the children if the node is trying to maximize for a node which is trying to minimize this will be the minimum of children for a min position the value of its smallest successor okay but uh, why we why we are calling as backup means so this this value will backup it will go up to the parent it will go up to the root node right so that when we discuss an example the things will be uh, clarified okay right so the min max procedure what it does it search down several levels at the bottom level that is at the leaf level it will apply the utility function and it will back up the values way up to the root node and that node selects the move so this is the generic way how it works the search algorithm actually it will go up to the bottom most level so first it will be the max operation then min so max operation is by player 1 let us assume it is computer min operation is by the player 2 that is opponent again max min max min like that it will go up to the last node that is the leaf node on leaf node we apply utility function and based on this utility function the parent will get the value so this is leaf node assume the parent of the leaf node is a max node okay say there are so this parent say it has two child okay one child is having value x another child is having value y now if the parent is a max node then it will get the maximum of these two values okay so if y is maximum then it will get y here then this is a if this is a max node then this is a min node then this node will get the minimum of all its children if it has five children out of all five ch children what is the minimum value that will go here so on and so forth this value will propagate up to the parent so that concept is called as backing up so so that is how the minimax procedure works okay so if you don't understand now fully it's not an issue when we discuss the when we discuss an example things will be clarified but as of now at the top level you understand this much when a move is uh, done by both the both the players player 1 also made a move for maximizing and player 2 also has made a move for minimizing player 1 so this both moves this put together is called as a move okay both actions put together is called as a move if only one player made a move then that is called as a ply or a half move then on the leaf node we apply the utility function and we calculate the value and 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 the value will be backed up at the at the max position uh, the backed up value will be equal to the largest of the largest value of its successor at the min position the backed up value will be equal to the smallest value of its successor and this min max algorithm what it does it uh, it repetitively applies max min max min until it reaches the leaf node and from the leaf node the values will be backing up to the parent how it will back up that depends on what parent it is whether it is max or min okay see here is an uh, example for min max again under a deterministic uh, environment so with this uh, algorithm things will be with this example things will be clear this is a two ply game two ply means what ply is a half move when only one uh, user makes a move it is called as ply so two ply means it is one move so totally we have one move that is uh, that is a one move by max it is a half move by max and another half move by min or player 1 makes a half move max move and player 2 makes a min move so this put together is called as one move or two play okay right so initially say it is player 1's move that is player 1 want to maximize so this maximize is represented using this triangle okay using the triangle and minimization is represented using the inverted triangle so whenever it's maximizing so 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 the player one will always look for the child with maximum score 
here the score is given okay so the player one has three successors i mean at this point at, at the root node when the player one is at root level he has three successors a1 a2 a3 a1 with the value of 3 a2 with the value of 2 a3 with the value of 2 so uh, so so the so the player one will choose what player one will 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 always try to maximize so he chooses his three this three that is his choosing choosing this path if player one chooses this path now next is it is it is player two's turn player two always want to minimize player one's chance of winning so so given that player one has made this move now what player two can do player two has three possibilities either it can allow this path which will lead to 3 or it can allow this path which will lead to 12 or it can allow this path which will lead to 8 but player 2 what is objective his objective is to minimize the score of player 1 so you don't want to maximize the score of player 1 so out of all these three it will take three only it take the minimum one okay because he want to minimize the output of player 1 so he will choose 3 right and this is the leaf node okay so this is the case if player 1 chooses the first path obviously player 1 chooses the first path only because player 1 always want to maximize right but suppose say that player 1 chooses the second path if player 1 chooses the second path then what player 2 will do then also player 2 will out of this which is the minimum 2 player 2 will choose this one okay suppose if player 2 chooses the third player one chooses the third path then out of these three which is the minimum one two so player two will choose this one okay but this two will not happen actually player one will choose this path and finally he will end up here right because this is the best thing that player one can do nothing beyond that because there is an adversary player two is the adversary who is always trying to minimize the performance of player one okay so here uh yeah so this is a brief overview of the minimax algorithm we'll discuss one more example with that the backing up and the exact working of the algorithm will be clear right so let us consider this tree so initially so these are the turns so in initially max that is player 1 is going to play who is who want to maximize his own then player 2 will play who want to minimize player 1's performance then again player 2 again player 1 okay say these are the leaf nodes let us assume that we know the value of leaf nodes we know the value of leaf nodes okay and the algorithm is something like an it first goes this path fully it is something similar to a depth first search so uh, so we go up to the leaf node okay up to the leaf node we go so we go to 84 first we go to this this 84 node right the leaf node is what 84 he we come here right and this is what min so min say say now only this is explored this 84 only is explored this 29 minus 29 is not explored so out of 84 okay this is min node this is min node okay he should choose minimum of his successor but currently he has explored only this successor initially all these were zero that is different but now this 84 is explored okay out of all the leaf nodes this say it is this 84 is explored so what will come here 84 will come here because only this is explored so it will come here okay for min right for max so this is called as backing up let us try to understand what is backing up see at this point all all are zeros if you see min max everything but other than the leaf everything is zero but now the algorithm the min max algorithm how it works in the sense from the root it will go up to the leaf level the first it will take the leftmost path and it checks what is that 84 the leftmost node is 84 at the top what is the parent parent is min or max min so it will take the minimum of all the successor but now we have explored only one successor that is 84 so we know as of now we know only one successor that is 
so that value will go to the parent because parent always wants the minimum value and currently we have only one value so it will goes there right now so this is called as backing up this 84 is now backed up to the parent now the backup will go to its parent also okay but 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 what is the parent here it is a maximize node right it is a maximize node so what it will do it will take the maximum of its two children so when you compare when you compare 4 and uh, okay so this is a max node it will check its two children right one only the leaf node we have not explored other nodes let us assume it is explored if it is red uh, i mean this green things were not explored okay so out of this two 84 and 0 what is the maximum zero so now we are backing up the zero here right it continues it continues again the backup will go for the its parent also now this is minimize it wants the minimum of two what is the minimum of this two both are zero so it is zero and this will go to up to the root level here what is the minimum of this two again it is zero okay so this is after 84 now this Uh, this is not its only child it has another child also minus 29 so now it has another child minus 29 now this is a minimizing player so this player he want to minimize so he again compares this this score 84 with minus 29 which is the minimum minus 29 is minimum so this will become minus 29 okay minus 29 so now now it has backed up minus 29. right now this this will again this will be backing up so here but this is a max node it want maximum of minus 29 and 0 so that is 0 this is minimum it wants minimum of 0 and 0 that is 0 again this is maximum it want maximum of 0 and 0 that is 0 okay so now we have explored these two nodes now we have explored uh, these two nodes right okay so similarly the algorithm continues so 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 you can see here so at this point when you explore uh, when you finished exploring this two node this point is minus 29 okay and here it is still zero because because the, because this is a max node when you compare this two zero is the maximum okay so now this this is explored so next the algorithm it will go so all these are explored so it will it will come to this part so now you find minus 37 so you find minus 37 this is not yet find so again this is a min node so it has to find minimum of minimum so it has only one choice minus 37 so that will minus 37 will come here right now what will be this max minus 29 and minus 37 what is the maximum of that minus 29 is the max so here it will be minus 29 okay this is min this is min okay what is the minimum of minus 29 and 0 minus 29 is the minimum okay so minus 29 will come here again what is the minimum of maximum of uh, minus 29 and 0 so 0 will come here okay so that is what next move after identifying minus 37 so so that's what it is showing here this diagram if you see after exploring minus 37 minus 37 comes here and here it is minus 29 because out of this two the max is minus 29 here it is minus 29 because this is min out of this two the minimum is minus 29 again here it is zero because out of this two the max is zero okay so now we have explored only one child of this but it has another child so when you explore this child what will happen this is minus 25 already this is minus 37 what is minimum this is this is this player want to minimize this this is player 2 who always want to minimize the player wants value so minus 37 is the minimum one so it will remain as minus 37 okay so there is no change because minus 37 is less than minus 25 right so after exploring minus 25 also here there is no change okay so on and so forth the algorithm continues so now all these were explored 
So now the algorithm will backtrack and it will explore this path. So when it explores this path, it is one. Again, this is min. So when you when you when it comes here, it becomes one, right? Out of out of then this. So this is called as backing up. So this value is backed up here. Again, it should be backed up. So out of but but this is a max node. Out of one and zero, which is max, one is max. So one will come here. Again, this is min. Out of minus twenty nine and one, what is min? Minus twenty nine is min. Again, this is max. Out of minus twenty nine and zero, what is max? Zero is max. So that is what happened after exploring one. Okay. So after exploring one, uh, this is here. It is not shown. Okay. So yeah, this is uh, yeah. Ideally, it should be one here. Okay. I I guess you understand. So after exploring one, it should be one, and so on and so forth. This should be one. Uh, yeah, only after exploring one, this will be one because we don't know that minus forty three. So out of this two, this will be zero, so on and so forth. Okay. After exploring minus forty three, what will happen? Previously it was one, one and minus forty three, which is minimum minus forty three. So minus forty three will come here. Okay. Then. Then this is a max node. Okay, this is a max node. Uh, so uh, out of, uh, I mean, yeah. So in the previous round also, this is this is also one. Okay, out of uh, yes. So so this is. Uh, Yes. Now we have explored both one and minus forty three. So this is this is a min min. Here we are doing min. So this becomes minus forty three, right? Then in the next level, this is max. So minus forty three and zero. So it gets zero. Again, this is min. Minus twenty nine and zero. It gets minus twenty nine. Again, it is max. Minus twenty nine and zero. It gets zero. Okay. So this is after exploring this path. So next. Next, we have to explore this path, right? So when you explore this path again, what will happen? Yeah, first we explore only minus seventy-five. So when you explore minus seventy-five, so obviously this is min, so this becomes minus seventy-five. This is max minus forty-three minus seventy-five, so this will be minus forty-three. Okay, again this is min minus twenty-nine minus forty-three. Minus twenty nine minus forty three, so this will be minus forty three, right? So because we explored only minus seventy five, this forty nine we have not yet explored, so this minus seventy five comes here. This is max. Max of this two is minus forty three. This is min. Min of this two is minus forty three. Okay. Max of minus forty three and zero is zero, right? So so that's what it is showing here. It is minus seventy five. Here it is. Uh, minus forty three, okay, because uh, this is the max of this two. Here it is again. It is minus forty three, because this is the min of this two. This is zero, because out of zero and minus forty three, zero is the max. Now, when you explore forty nine, when you explore forty nine, will there be any change? No change, because this will be minus seventy five only, because it it uh, this is what min. This is min. So after exploring forty nine, there is no change because this is this one the minimum one. It 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 don't minds about that uh, maximum thing, right? So now the entire left uh, tree is explored. Similarly, we should do for the right sub. -tree. Okay. Similarly, we should uh, do for the right sub tree. So we can do so here directly. It is shown. So so for example, minus twenty nine, minus twenty one. So first this will be minus twenty one. Okay, then this is max. This is zero, right? Out of this two, zero. Again, this is min zero. Okay. Again, out of this two, it is uh, max. It is zero. But when you explore minus fifty one, which is minimum, minus fifty one is minimum. So this becomes minus fifty one. Okay. After exploring this two, this becomes minus fifty one. And max. This is again zero. Max of minus fifty one and zero is zero, right? Min of zero and zero is uh, zero. 
and max of 0 and minus 43 is 0. Okay. Right. After exploring 58, after exploring 58, this will become 58. Right. Okay. And what is max of minus 51 and 58? This will be 58. Okay. What is min of 58 and 0? This will be 0. What is max of 58 and 0? It will be 0. After exploring minus 46, this will become minus 46 because that is the minimum, right? So this is max of minus 51 and minus 46. So, so which is max? Minus 46 is max. So this will become minus 46. Okay. This is what? Uh, this is min of minus 46 and 0. So this will become minus 46. Okay. This is max of minus 43 and minus 46. So this will become minus 43. Okay. This is after exploring 58 and minus 46. Then after exploring minus 3, after exploring minus 3, this will become minus 3. This is max of minus 3 and 0 is 0. No change. And min of uh, minus 46 and 0 is minus 46. And at the top, it remains the same. Okay. After exploring minus 13, after exploring minus 13, this becomes minus 13 because this is minimum, right? Minimum is minus 13. So, so this becomes minus 13. Max of minus 39 and 0 is 0. So this remains 0. And min of minus 46 and 0 is minus 46. And max of minus 43 and minus uh, and, and max of minus 43 and minus 46 is minus 43. Okay. Fine. After exploring 26, after exploring 26, this will become 26. Right. And and this is max of minus 13 and 26. So this will become 26. Minus 30, minus 13 and 26, this will become 26, right? Okay. And and this is min of minus 46 and 26. So that will remain as minus 46. That will remain as minus 46. And, and this is max of minus 43 and minus 46. That will also remain as minus 43. And after exploring 79, there is no change because this is min. Anyway, it is going to pick up 26 only. So this is max of minus 13 and 26. That is 26. This is min of minus 46 and 26. That is minus 46. And this is max of minus 43 and minus 40. That is minus 43. So this is what we get. So that is what uh, is mentioned here. So you can see at the root, we have minus 43. Uh, then minus 46. Okay. Then minus 46 and uh, 26. Then minus 51, minus 46, yeah, minus 13 and 26, right? So like this, the tree is now fully explored, okay? Now you can identify what is the optimal path. So I am optimal path from the perspective of player one. So we, we assume ourselves as player one. So what is the best thing player one can do? So what? So what is the best thing uh, player one can do in the sense, for example, if assume that if player one makes the first move here, okay, if player one makes the first move here, right, so he will not move, make, let us follow this. So player one always want to maximize. So minus 43. This is minus 43, this is minus 46. So what player one will do? We will make this move. Next to player two, this is player two's choice. Player two will try to minimize. So what player two will make a move? He want to minimize the chance of uh, winning, okay? So what player two will make move? Again, the player two will make this move, right? Okay, because player one wanted to maximize so out of minus 43 and minus 46, uh, the player one has chosen the highest number. Out of minus 43 and minus 46, minus 43 is the biggest number. So it came here, right? But player two want to minimize. Out of minus 29 and minus 43, minus 43 is the minimum value. So it moved here. 
now again it is player one turn now player one want to maximize so out of minus 43 and minus 75 he follows this path he follows this path okay now now again it is player two so player two want to always minimize so out of this one and this thing the player two uh, will choose the one which leads to the least path that is minus 43 okay so in this scenario this is the best thing we can do we cannot improve the solution further are you getting because there is an opponent because there is an opponent who is always trying to minimize our performance okay so this is how min max works so min max so basically it, it is somehow it is resemblance to an depth first search but it is aware of an opponent and according to the opponent strategy it is making the move right okay so so this is the optimal move it can it can perform right okay uh, so you may why do we may why do we take the minimum value every other level of the tree because these nodes represents the opponent's choice of move okay and we assume ourselves to be computer that is the player one is computer the computer one always tries to maximize whereas the opponent always tries to minimize the computer assumes that the human will choose the move that is of least value so p1 is the computer and p2 is human okay p1 is computer and p2 is human and we assume ourselves to be computer and we want to maximize our our output whereas the human who is our opponent he is trying to minimize our output right so that we are following this strategy at at one time max and then min so so this algorithm is called as mini max algorithm right so this is the algorithm this is a recursive version of the mini max algorithm here you can see mini max decision this is the name of the algorithm it takes a state and it returns an action and and what action what path it should follow that is given as max value of state it just calls a function called max value of state and what is max value this is max value this function again it's a separate function it returns a utility value okay if so whatever the state the max value is receiving if that is a terminal state then return the utility of the state because only for the leaf node we have the utility so if you recall the uh, graph if you recall the tree the tree is something it goes on like this okay the previous tree which we have discussed at the end in the leaf nodes only we have some number 43 12 or or minus 7 some numbers these are the utility values so that here we check whether it is a whether the state is a terminal state or not terminal means leaf state if that is the state if that is a terminal state then return the utility value whatever the number associated with that return otherwise if that is not the terminal state then we have to identify the value then then we assume the initially the value to be minus infinity in case of max in case of max move we assume the value to be minus infinity okay because because max always tries to take the better value right he always tries to take a positive value higher number but uh, as it is maximum we are trying the least possible value we are going to the negative infinity okay then for a comma s in successors of state so you are passing some state to this algorithm right let us assume it is a root state root state is passed to the algorithm then it says that you find for a comma s in successor successors of state do that is for all successors you do this operation let us assume the first successor is this so for the first successor what we are supposed to do we are supposed to calculate this v equal to max of v comma min value of s v equal to max of v comma min value of s so s is the current state s is the successor first successor so let us assume this is s1 currently let us assume s is equal to s1 the first successor so max of v comma min comma value of s so previously what is the what is v minus infinity so it is saying that you find max of 
minus infinity comma the minimum value of yes okay because in the next round it should go for min right so what is this min again it is another function it is defined here right so min value of state returns a utility value again we are checking if it is a terminal state then return the utility state otherwise we set v equal to infinity because min will take always minimum value so here we are checking setting it as high positive number which is infinity then again here you see what we are doing again again for this we are creating successor so this state is paused this s1 is paused here for this we are creating all the successor right so it has many successor let us assume its first successor is called as s11 and now that we are calling as s for a comma s in successor of state so this is s1 at this point this is s okay but the successor of s1 is say s11 s12 all these things are this is s12 we are first we are taking s11 let us assume s1 and s yes then again what we do v is equal to min of so here we say v is equal to min of v what is v now infinity infinity comma max value of yes so again this function calls this function again this function calls this function so it is it is one function calling another function see this are you getting this max is calling this min and this min is calling max it is calling like this repetitively right so this node is passed again as a parameter to max right and it will create all its children how long it continues until it reaches the leaf node right at one point it will reach the leaf node and then it will return the utility so whatever the utility it will go to the parent okay say say it has reached the leaf node so that utility value will go to the parent so if its utility value is 42 this 42 will come here now min of infinity and 42 is what positive infinity and 42 what is minimum 42 is minimum so it will take 42 okay it will take temporarily 42 but this is not its only child it, it has another child also then this loop will repeat for one one more time are you getting so next time when it returns it will return 12 so now it is min of 42 comma 12 so basically it will take 12 because that is the minimum okay next uh, it will this 12 will be returned to this max max because at the top we have max so 12 will come here but this is not its only child it may have another child so in that path also okay so in that path it may have some children so based on that it will get the minimum value and that maximum value again come are you getting so there it will say here it will be max of first round minus infinity comma 12 out of minus infinity 12 which is bigger 12 right so temporarily it will take 12 but that is not its only child it has another it may have another child also it may explore but there it will perform in so on and so forth so like that uh, this is uh, it calls uh, the max calls the min and min calls the max it goes on until it reaches the leaf node and 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 finally whatever the algorithm we have discussed previously this uh, whatever the steps we have discussed that is actually clearly will be done by this uh, coding right so so that's what uh, it does so further you can explore this algorithm by yourself i have given a glimpse on that the working procedure okay fine so now let us try to analyze the properties of min max mini max algorithm right whether is it complete so basically it is it is something like a dfs so most of the properties of dfs actually is applicable to mini max so it is complete if the tree is finite so that is the case with dfs also dfs is complete in a finite state space so so it is complete in a finite state space is it optimal dfs is not optimal but this is optimal minimax is optimal against an optimal opponent right see in this example we have assume we have identified an optimal solution against an optimal opponent so we assumed our opponent also to be 
optimally component op optimally competitive like us so then we are able to identify this optimal solution so with an optimal opponent minimax is optimal okay Be because when an when an optimal opponent is working this is the best solution you can arrive at there is no other best solution uh, so so is it optimal yes it is optimal against an optimal opponent but if the opponent is not optimal then it is not optimal okay if the opponent is not optimal it is not optimal right that means that if the opponent is sub optimal sub optimal means op opponent is not playing with his full potential okay then then actually this algorithm cannot exploit the weakness of the opponent it cannot exploit the weakness of the opponent and it cannot improve the result further so you getting see normally in a in a game two player game in any game okay if both or if if both or uh, both the players are very talented okay then uh, what you uh, then the chance of winning is very less right for both of them it is a it, it will be a tough game okay but if one of the player is sub optimal then the other player can exploit his weakness then the other player can exploit his weakness right but actually that doesn't happen in minimax algorithm if the opponent is optimal then it will identify the optimal solution i mean it's not here optimal in the sense it's not the best solution given the opponent's uh, what you call open uh, opposition given the opponent's full opposition in place it will find a optimal solution okay but if the opponent is sub optimal then it cannot exploit the weakness of the opponent and it and, and it cannot perform better so in that context uh, if the opponent is not optimal it is the algorithm is not optimal okay its time complexity is same as that of uh, depth first search order of b to the power m and its space complexity is again order of uh, depth uh, same as that of depth first search it is order of b m okay so this is the brief introduction to minimax algorithm and adversarial search so let us stop here for today's discussion thank you